So a couple years ago, I did a video about what happens if you run the sudo rm-rf slash command on a Linux installation, specifically an installation of Ubuntu 20.04. And in case you're unfamiliar with the sudo rm-rf slash command, what it does is basically deletes all the files on your Linux installation, at least until it's so broken that it can no longer function. So now, there are thousands upon thousands of critical system files on any Linux installation, and those will vary based on distribution, but that experiment where I ran the sudo rm-rf slash command got me thinking, is there one single file that is so critical to a Linux installation that even deleting just that one file will break the entire Linux installation, like to the point where it's completely unusable? We're about to find out. All right, so I have a fresh installation of Ubuntu 22.04, and I've done nothing to it yet other than installing updates and virtual machine drivers, so you can see what's going on in full screen. So the very first step of this experiment is obviously to go to the root of our Linux installation, and let's try and figure out where to go after. You might look in sys. I'm not sure we can delete one file and break the entire Linux installation. Like, I feel like you might notice some piece of hardware might not work, but I'm not sure if you can get it into this state where it just won't work at all, which is what I'm going for. Etsy is for storing data for applications, at least system-wide data. If we go after the home, obviously, anything we delete out of there won't affect the system. But libraries, again, I can't really see a single instance where deleting just one file would break the whole system completely. MNT and OPT, obviously, there's nothing in there. I'm not gonna go after that root. I'm not sure. There's a whole lot we can do with that. I would say my best bet would probably be to find something essential out of the bin directory, but again, it's one of those things like the sys directory or the lib directory or the USR directory. I'm gonna be experimenting here for a while, and I don't want to drag out this video to be crazy long. So, I would honestly say that my best bet would be to go after the boot directory. Since I want this to work on any system, I'm not going to really go after EFI, even though for UEFI systems that would be very effective. Okay, hold up. Let me just check what kernel we're running. And by the way, pro tip, you can do this on any Linux distribution from a terminal just by typing uname-r and it'll tell you the kernel version. So we're running 5.15.053 generic. So memtest86 is just the memory testing application that ships with Ubuntu that only works on legacy. So I'm not gonna really go after that. So I feel like my best bet is probably gonna be the VM Linux file for our kernel version. I'm just gonna go delete this file, reboot, and see what happens. Like, the only way we're going to notice an effect is if we reboot, just because we messed with the bootloader. Alright, let's see. So we got our existing kernel version. That won't work. What about our old kernel? Okay, so it appears just that kernel is giving us issues. So we can still boot into the old kernel just fine. Alright, so now let's get back to our boot directory. This time I'm not going to go after anything version specific. Let's delete the grub.cfg file. And again, since we're targeting the bootloader, we're gonna have to reboot the system and see what happens. Oh, okay, there we go. And yes, there are some files on a Linux distribution that are so critical that even if you delete just that one file, your entire Linux installation is broken to the point where it's completely unusable. And this is mostly the case with files pertaining to your bootloader, which actually can be easily repaired by any expert Linux user. Now, this video is specifically focused on Grub, but I imagine you could take that same principle and apply it to any other bootloader. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, found it interesting, hit the like button, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, 
and leave a comment.